Welcome back, everyone, to Talking It Out with Bachelor Nation. This week, we are talking to the recipient of Rachel's first one-on-one date, Jordan V. Very yes. excited to talk to Jordan V. But, Mike, how we feeling, man? You know we got to get into our hot takes. We got to get into the hot takes. But I have to say, I have to call out Nate. He did a phenomenal. I loved watching Nate yesterday on on uh, The Bachelorette. Love watching him. I mean, everything that he was standing for, I was back home just throwing popcorn at the screen, just standing ovation for the Nate handled himself in every single situation. And Chris, yes, Lord have mercy. That's all I'm going to say about Chris. So <laughs> listen, Nate, Nate, Nate shut down Chris. I loved how he did it. I thought no, he, he did, did it respectfully. He called dude, him out re- and. Oh, do you remember the Chris part? My favorite part. My favorite part that Nate did in regards to Chris. So Chris came back. This was at the end of the episode. Chris came back, right? And he just, whatever the BS he said. I want to know who said what or whatever. Gabby said something to him. Bruh. <laughs> He stood up so fast. Hey, she said, "You ain't you can leave now." You, I was like, "That's what you, I'm talking about, boy. That's what I'm talking you about." You heard the lady. You heard. Yeah, you, you heard, heard her. her. Like, you heard the lady. And then I <laughs> get out. I know Nate. Nate's pretty tall, right? He's a really tall guy. So he just was staggering over Chris. I was so uh, just so happy to see that moment. Had yeah, a shout out. I was so Chris. happy too. I wanted to record today just so I can shout him out. That, that's yeah. All you I could say. tell Chris wanted to come back and give those guys a piece of their mind, but. You know, but for what? Bounced, and that's how you know that you're being like narcissistic. And I, I hope that you hear this, homie. Like that's how you know you're being narcissistic. You're not there for them. Listen, man, and just make sure that. I mean, your vocals, man. They were all right. I mean, you're better than me. I'll give you that. But <laughs> he's that's better not than me saying too, much. So I'm not right? gonna say that. Oh, yeah, he's better and than that, me too. That's not saying much. But you don't just come out on national television and and belt out those tunes. Like, unless you're, like, really confident, which apparently he's a little overconfident because it wasn't that great. I'm not going to lie. No, nah, it wasn't that great. I, 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 no. I kind of forgot about his uh, his voice, but it was better than mine. It wasn't so, I mean, good. It, it I'm, wasn't good I'm enough actually to, like, give actually him credit. come out like that. I'm going to give him credit for being that confident with his voice. I am really am. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, no, I, hey, I listen, appreciate more power when someone to you, is but, confident for that. I don't know. It looked like Gabby and Rachel, there was, like, some crickets on their end when it came to when he started singing. So... I don't know. But anyway, I that's why he's home, right? But I was actually that's a little shocked did. with uh I was actually a little shocked with Jordan. Like I night was one too, man. with the car, with I, the with the I, car I racing too. and all that. And I thought they him and Rachel really vibed. And he got you sent know, home, man. I'm gonna ask him, you know I like to be honest. I'm gonna say, bro, you you a good looking dude, homie. You you obviously yeah. got her liking you. She got you got the first one on one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask go him wrong? when he's on. I'm. I see you're gonna be sweet about it. I'm gonna say, Jordan, do you have game or not? <laughs> I just have to know. I'm gonna ask him that straight up, so I can't wait. Hey man, to talk listen. To maybe later. there was a conversation that we missed. You know, maybe the. I'm you know, sure we missed something. On certain you know, things that we didn't see. Sir, you never know. I'm sure we but missed it. But Nate, let's get yeah, into Nate the hot did it takes. right, man. I was I was definitely impressed with Nate, like you said. So, but yeah, let's get into these hot uh, takes. Super stand up for Nate. I, I, yes, I wish I was on Twitter last night. Uh, but into the hot takes, I have to know. And this also came from just watching the show and watching Logan. I thought that Logan did a phenomenal job uh, trying to get to know both the ladies. I really do. But the hot take came and I was thinking about like, you know, back home when you're not on the show. You're single, Brian. I got to paint the picture for you. I know. Mm-hmm. So you're single in this context. Okay. Right? Hypothetical. Hypothetical. Hypothetical, yes. of course. You know, I ain't trying to get slapped by big sis, right? Hypothetical. You're single in this context. If you want to date with a woman and she tells you, Hey, just so you know, I'm loving my date with you, but I want to be respectful and let you know up front, I'm also dating someone else. I don't intend to always date two people, but or three people, however many, but I just want to let you know I'm dating other people and trying to find my person. Would you so be okay I, Okay, with that? so based based on the way you say it, I presume that they are not dating seriously. Like casually dating what me, if they casually are dating, dating him? seriously. No. Why you are you even on the date with me? What are you doing on the date if you're dating this somebody is, this seriously? Is exactly this is just what happened on uh, The Bachelorette. Gabby, Rachel, Logan, he, you know, he, I think that all three of those participants are taking each other serious. No? No, no. It, it's not to say that they're not taking each other serious, but I think he's dating both. At the moment, essentially, like, it's meant to be serious long term. Like, he wants to get serious, but he's not going to end up serious with both, right? Like, eventually, he's going to have to Probably choose. Probably not. You, Probably. I mean, there's always a chance. There's, you know what I'm saying? So I, I like know. if I was in the real world and I was dating somebody and they told me, hey, look, you know, I'm I'm dating around like mm-hmm. I'm OK with it. Like if this is our first or second date, I at least know where I stand. I'm not 
yes. you know, being kept in the dark about it. And at the yes. same time, maybe I'm doing the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I could be honest with her right back. And yes. we could still that see That leads each to other. another question. No problem. That leads to another question right there. What's the follow-up to that then would be, is it dishonest when someone reveals something to you and you might be doing the same, but you don't tell them that you are? Strictly specific, sp- yeah. speaking to, if your date tells you, hey, Brian, you know, I'm really liking you. I just want to let you know up front, be honest. I'm also dating someone else, trying to see uh, which one I'm more inclined to. And you are doing the same, but you don't tell her. To me, in my eyes, that's a lie. Yeah, no. Why, why wouldn't you okay. Why wouldn't you express that at that moment? You know what okay. I'm saying? Like, if she expressed sure. that to me and I was doing the same thing, but yeah, I'm actually, yeah. my I myself as well, are am dating other people as well, or one other person, you know? It's like, I don't know, I guess your question, if I was dating somebody exclusively and when, and use the word serious, then I wouldn't be dating the other person, right? Okay, so like, you look so at the, words, like, I, you look I, the I, word serious, I got you. Yeah, like I bring it down to casually, like I could go on a date with you, I could go on a date with this other person, and I'm going to let each person know, and if they don't like it, I'm trying to decide for myself. It's my journey, right? S- same thing that the woman could say. You know what I'm saying? Correct, I, correct, I totally correct. respect that. And at that point, it becomes, do you want to partake in that? I wouldn't mm-hmm. mind doing it. I would like, if I like the girl, if I like the woman, I would want to see her more. And we continue to go on dates. I think that open line of communication is, is healthy. Um, hopefully it's, she continues to be honest with me. If it ever gets serious with that other person and she wants me out of the picture, then I'd appreciate her to be upfront about that. And I would do the same thing, but maybe... The other guy drops off, right? And now yes. you're the one left. Well, like, there's hey, no you know maybe. What? For me. I've decided Brian, that you. you're the one. Brian, there. first off, it's me. Pause. It would be no maybe. It's Dr. <laughs> As we're talking about, right? So she could tell you that, but then after the first date, <laughs> there's going to be no other guy. You know, it is what it is. Uh, hey, but I feel you that. Know. You never know. I mean, you never know. True. I mean, if it's a. <laughs> I say it. <laughs> but on a, that has happened to me before. A woman has said that to me. And I, my first thought was, wow. She, in my eyes, was on such a higher level because I felt that that was such a beautiful, honest, transparent thing to, to say. And I took that as she's not playing games. She's extremely serious. And the way I interpreted that was in such a beautiful highlight of her. I respected her on such a different level. Um, and I and think about it. She maybe isn't afraid to lose you because some correct men, correct. maybe they're not at that level i don't know if to call it immaturity if you don't want to deal with that but like if you couldn't handle it and you were out then she's like okay that's my truth if you don't like it then peace out then peace out that's that's the flip side about it and this is what i think that in this example or not this example this true story would have happened what took place like a few years ago i i guess my pride got in the way because i said Oh, I liked it when she said that. And I was like, wow, well, I'm the better man. I'm going to let it be known. Like, I'm so not wait, letting did it be known. become like, like a little competition it? for you at that point? It, it wasn't like nothing to lie about. It was more of like, I respect her and I'm putting my best foot forward as well. Like, it was more of. So did that kind of tur- so turn you on a little bit forward. when she mentioned that? That shit turned me on. It turned me on. Okay. It 100% turned me on. Like, 100% turned me on. Hey. I, I know. Sometimes I was, uh, we need a little. Sometimes we like little challenges. You know what I mean? You know, it is. I always say that. I've said this in the past. I'm like, The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, for some people, not all people, but for some people, it's the exact same, except for you know who your competition is, per se. For men yeah, and women, both. I mean, there is, I mean that's, you're dating is is 30 people, people in front of each other. I mean, not necessarily 30. I don't know who got time for all that. Like, ugh, I can't even imagine. Well, on The Bachelor. But, on The Bachelor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on The Bachelor. But like, some people might be dating three or four or five people, maybe. I've yeah. had homegirls that go on dates, and I can call them my, uh, my lady friend's names, but they go on dates seven days a week with somebody different. <laughs> and that's just what they do. You know, they're, that's they're their eating thing. Good. <laughs> they're eating good. They're eating good. Steak and lobster every night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> every shit. Night some sushi hey, in more there, more power great. to you. More power to you if you're doing that. <laughs> More power to him. But no, I I agree with you. I don't, I find it endearing. I find it extremely respectful and someone that is thoughtful and someone that's serious about dating and they're not, they're intentional. And I I really appreciate it. That's rare though. So I just want to, that's rare because I mean, if you're on your first date, second date, it's like, you don't necessarily, 
owe them that per se. You don't owe yeah, them I don't know. that. Like but some people, some and, people and used to keep thing. that under wraps until later on. But I just, I just really appreciated the way that Gabby, the way that Rachel, the way that Logan, all three of them handled it. And I thought about that in the real world situation. All right, Mike, next hot yes. topic. If you break up with your girlfriend, who is now your ex, do you need to, de- <laughs> do you delete pictures of the history that you had with that person? Yes or no? I do. Or do you leave them up on social media? No, I delete them. And when I say delete, I'm talking about not archive, but I actually delete. And I say that for me, what my future girlfriend would do, I don't really care what she does. Um, Unless it's like... So even when you're single, though, like you're not in another relationship. And like maybe she gets mad and has to delete everything. Like this is just you being single. You guys break up. So you would still do it. I would delete the pictures. Yes. And... I would delete the pictures for this very reason, not to be petty, but because like I'm I love you and it hurts for me to see that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to block you. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing none of that stuff. But I will delete the pictures because when I go to my social feed, seeing you just it's like with that Neo song where he talks about uh, his voicemail. He had to change his voicemail because it said that we can't come pick up Uh, the phone. You remember that song? song. His new album, Go Hard, too. Yeah. But. That's the reason why I had to delete it. Not to be petty, but just because I, I'm so in love with you still. Even though you, we broke up, I'm, I still care about you deeply. And I just don't want to see that. It's only going to make me hurt more. I remember, bro, true story. I don't think I've ever said this before. Last time, uh, when, I, when I was at a relationship from the person that I was in love with, I remember going to the mall. <laughs> Brian, I went to the mall. <laughs> Within three minutes, I had to run out because I almost started crying because people were holding hands. Like oh, that's me. Wow. I'm, yeah, that's that's how I am. That, so therefore, that cut I have deep, to Mike. I'm just saying, bro. So, so just Neil seeing just said, people we, hold hands made you run out that damn mall crying or almost crying, bro. Bro, was my first love. You had, it, you had it bad, bro. <laughs> you oh, I had, had it bad. It I, was, bad. I, sure, I had it bad. <laughs> <laughs> I had it bad, right? But and that's after why you have don't have to call. You don't have to call. <laughs> oh, you know we good. Yo, now. but <laughs> I'm. Great now. But yeah, I would have to delete it for that reason, not to be petty. What about you? Let me ask you this, though. Follow up. Mm-hmm. What if your ex gets into a relationship and now, even though you don't have her on your feed, you're seeing her on your timeline, boot up. Boot up, boot up. That uh, also cuts deep. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't want to see I don't want to see that. I'm so not do you block that. her at this point? I'm not. No, I ain't blocking her. Like, I'm not gonna block her out. It's, it's a tough I would, call. I would probably. It depends on how we broke up. How I would answer that question. It depends on how we broke up. Okay. If okay. I feel like there's still a potential, then I'll probably put you on mute. I'll probably put you on mute. <laughs> it's like limited, limited exposure. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll I put, agree with I'll, you, man. I'll like, definitely put you on mute. Uh, honestly, I think it's uh, for me to each their own. I'm yeah, not that's the ultimate answer. I, I can't talk about your mental health. I can't talk about anybody else's mental health. If that is what it takes for you to be at peace mentally and you just can't take, you know, seeing the seeing the pictures in your feed or seeing her on your timeline with somebody else and you feel the need to block like it is what it is. Some people do that. They erase the entire history just so they don't have history. to relive that history right and i, I don't have a problem with it would i do it what's that i said i delete the cash and everything you... <laughs> you delete everything listen some people need to do that and i don't fault them for that i mean like you said maybe it was a rough breakup she cheated on yeah. you he cheated on her whatever the case may be um or whatever even if you ended amicably it's it's a situation I'm where about to say, i think the amicable regardless it's gonna almost... hurt yeah yeah, it hurt. might be pain even tougher. Pain. I mean, it, it hurts. It hurts mm-hmm. no matter what. So if that's what it's going to take for you to maintain your mental health and be able to move forward, because what happens? You keep them on your timeline. You keep them on your feed. And you can't you can't that's help but think about good them. For you know some what I'm people. Yeah, that's not good for some people. Correct. I remember telling I remember telling my homeboys or my homegirls, too, and my sister. I was like, yo, stop sending me this this one chick in particular's photos. Like her, like, don't give me this link no more. I'm not trying to see her. Her booed up or her this that. They, they do it. They do it to be sweet. They I forget the reasons, but like, I ain't trying to see none of that shit. I don't know. This person is no longer in my life. 
Yeah, no, and especially and somebody like I'm, you, bro. I, I like love in stupid the, hard, man. I love extremely hard. And so I'm not trying to see that. And think about it. In somebody like your position, how many tags would you get? Oh, my God. that Your yeah, ex that's, was that's, with somebody else. We could see we could see that in Bachelor Nation going on right now. You know what oh, I'm saying? And that, that would drive me nuts. <laughs> I can't even imagine. Right? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, <laughs> you getting tagged a hundred times a day. Like, what is the point of that, people? Like, thanks. I I, I don't yeah, want to like, see thanks. this. Like, thanks. Like, I, what? You <laughs> want me to go it? off? Like, yeah. Like, come on, <laughs> leave me alone. And I just, it's, it's like, like I think setting people, fire. To <laughs> yeah, it's like you sending fire to fire. Like, what are you doing right now? Come on. Yeah, right. It. I think it's people like showing concern and care. So, like, did you see this? Or like, but it's just. Yes, I have a thousand care times. for this person. So I, yeah, I know a thousand times yeah. in the last ten minutes. I'm not trying to see it no more. Yeah, and so I, I, that's for me. That's why I would delete. It. I'm talking about, I'd, bro. I'd be deleting stuff off Facebook, Instagram, my cell phone. I'm not trying to see it. That's just me. Though. See, like I mean, I don't even. I don't even mess with Facebook that much as much. That neither that do I. That's anymore, why I said so. it. Because I, I probably have. I'm I probably have like there. pictures of like exes like. 10 years ago and it's like whatever i don't even yeah it doesn't even bother me but okay with that being said though i totally get that with that being said though do you what is your thoughts on if your 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 girlfriend or your wife or you has pictures of their ex on their social and or in their phone well let's just not i don't give a damn about phone because you'd be forgetting half the photos in your phone on your social right um yeah no that's that's kind of weird like See, Why do you have that up there? For me, it's different, bro. Like, I would say now, <laughs> if you date me and then you got a picture of you and Drake, I ain't delete that shit because. Oh, so it, it, if it's my, Drake, I yes, but if that. it's Joe Blow, no. Yeah, if, it, yeah, if it's Joe Blow, <laughs> you can leave him up there. I don't really care. No, I'm just being honest. I'm, He's I'm like, I got him. I got him. But Drake. Yeah, I got him. Drake's I ain't got Drake. Story. No, that's, that's champagne <laughs> poppy, okay? That's champagne poppy. Right? I, I ain't got champagne. Drake money now. I ain't got Drake money. Yeah, I, we you can't do that him. one, baby. You got to delete him. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, can, you can archive it so I don't see it. <laughs> to All right, man. We've been going on way too long. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this segment of uh, Hot Takes. But we got to get Jordan in here to hear his story and what went wrong on this week's episode. Oh, let's get into it, man. Let's bring him on. Welcome, Jordan. How you What's doing, up, man? I'm doing good. Nice to meet you too. I've been big fans of both of you, to tell you the truth. Pleasure, uh, you man. Lie to us Be like honest, that. man. You listen. You listen to our <laughs> podcast swear. every now and then. I don't listen to the podcast, but I, I watch your guys' seasons. Okay, okay. So, oh, awesome. Uh, awesome. We'll take that. Well, especially, that. especially, especially, that. You, especially yeah. you, Brian. Especially you, Brian. Especially you. So, <laughs> I saw it, that man. whole thing. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't look at the look at the I jawline on this guy, man. He's like a. He reminds me like an old school like Abercrombie model or something. Yeah, right. In high school, that's what you wanted to be, right? Well, we got. I'm, I'm nice, gonna call man. Jake Gyllenhaal out. You the better Jake Gyllenhaal right there. So Jordan, I, I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, I have to ask off top, man. You're you're a phenomenal looking guy, right? You got an awesomely cool job. Do you just not have game? Like what happened, man? <laughs> you know, uh, I always thought I had at least a little bit. Um, I'm playing. I think you know. I think at at the end of the day, you know, she just. Uh, she didn't feel the connection she was looking for, and that's okay. You know, right. um, there's somebody out there for everybody. So um, Absolutely. it just turns out that I wasn't her person, and uh, and hopefully she does find her person. I mean, uh, during the season, getting into that, Jordan. I mean, is there anything that you can think of that went wrong, or do you feel like you just did everything? You know, you were yourself. You did everything you could do, and it would just, like you said, just wasn't a connection. Or was there something that threw the connection off? No, you know, I think it went great, honestly. You know, the whole day, um, from the beginning of the day when she picked me up in the Impala, um, it was great. Conversation was flowing, and we were having a great time getting to know each other. And um, I think, you know, I think we had a lot in common, so we had a lot to talk about right off the right from the start. And uh, we would dive into those topics, you know, flying the plane, driving the race car. We talk about carburetors all the time. Uh, she was loving the carburetor talk. And... Um, you know, we were just we were getting to know each other and we had common you know, interests and similarities. So um, I think, you know, we got past that and we, we started to see if there was a love connection. And um, I definitely felt like there was something. Um, I feel like she felt something, too. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it wasn't enough. And, you know, maybe she already had started some connections with other guys. Um, for instance, you know, Logan the night before. 
Um, so I think at the end of the day, you know, it just wasn't enough for her and that's okay. And um, hopefully she finds what she's looking for. Well, definitely res respect how you feel in regards to her and just yourself. I mean, I think that you handled yourself well. Uh, Brian and I both had you like really high up. Like truly, truly. I'm high. not going to lie, man. I haven't been this shocked like for somebody to go on, like usually those first dates are, these are like some of the favorite guys. Right. So I was just shocked, yeah. but at the end of the day, I don't think it sounds like you did everything you showed out. You were yourself, you know, you presented yourself in a great way and it just wasn't in the card. So, you know, no knock against you at the end of the day, I don't think no knock you know whatsoever. I mean? But with that, Jordan, was there something that maybe the audience didn't get to see? Because we, as we know, we've been on the show as well. There are things that every single second can be shown. Was there maybe a conversation that you feel like uh, maybe more friendly instead of romantic? No, I don't think so. I think really, you know, um, building a relationship is about friendship first, right? So it is. Um, yes. a lot of our conversations were cordial and we were having a great conversation and we were joking around. She was laughing. I was laughing. I mean, you saw us on the plane um, when she asked me if I was scared and I said, Such yes, cool she, she had a belly laugh right there. So I knew that uh, she found it a little funny. But um, I think, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, um, we're looking for a love connection. She's looking for a husband. And our connection just wasn't quite measuring up to what she was looking for. And um, I, I think she was right in that decision, too. I mean, she's got to do what's best for her. You know, it's her journey. Um, I just was lucky to play a little part in it. No. Nah. Definitely agree with you there. Yeah, I, man, I, I really respected her for that because you would hate for somebody to drag you on, you know, and lead you on. And it, it gets deeper into it. So I respect her for that, too. Yeah. You know, it, and I've thought about that, too. You know, I thought about um, when she sent me home and thought about, you know, if she would have kept me and feelings gotten strong. She would have. Yeah. Well, well, not even that. It's just maybe she knew that it was missed, that something was missing, but she still decided to keep me and move me forward. You know, would that be doing me, you know, a disservice? So I respect her um, for just being honest with herself and being honest with me and just telling telling it like it is, like how it should have been, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I, I really look, respect her decision. Yeah. Could you look at it the other way in the sense of maybe, damn, I wish maybe if she would have given me a little bit more time, like maybe that, it could have opened Pandora's box as far as a connection between the two and maybe like something clicked in her brain instead of deciding so fast. You know, all the scenarios run through your head, you know, no matter what. So do I think that maybe if I suck around a little longer, could we have built on the connection that we already had? Possibly. But, you know, when you know, you know, and That's I think she knew in that moment during that very night. True. So um, she obviously respected me enough uh, to tell me the truth yeah. and let me go home. So uh, I really respect that. How do you feel about, so you are in a present, unprecedented season. You have two bachelorettes, right? That would be there the entire time. If Rachel said, hey, Jordan, you are my person, but I still want you here because you are a good person and you may be a good fit for Gabby. How would that, how would you have responded to that? Yeah, that's, that's definitely a good question. I think, um, I think I went into the experience knowing that I was going for Rachel. Okay. Um, that's kind of how I went into it. Uh, Gabby's a great girl. I had a, I had a lot of things I wanted to talk to Gabby about, actually, her relationship with her grandfather. Um, I can relate to very much so. I actually have a tattoo on my arms in tribute um, to my grandfather. So um, I think I could have related to Gabby in some sort of way, but um, I really went in for Rachel, and I was going to give all my effort to her. And I did that. You know what? It didn't work out. And it is what it is. Nothing wrong with that. It's funny, uh, Mike, because uh, we were talking about this. Remember, we were talking about this, like, you know, as far as going into hypothetically, right? Going in, like, would you yes. kind of figure when out? Clickbait. I actually would have taken Jordan's approach. I would have just yes. gone for the girl I wanted to go after. And if it didn't work out, then I either would have bowed out or have her send me home. But I wouldn't have, you know, kind of tested the waters with both. That was just me. You know, I was... But. I was, thinking about that conversation. Right I was thinking about that conversation, I was thinking about that conversation, watching you, Jordan, last night, watching Logan. And I had told uh, Brian on our sister station on Clickbait, I said I would have gone in completely open to both people if I was attracted to both people. And then, you know, saw if the personality I was attracted to as well. 
But after watching it last night, I think that would have been the day that I would have decided to go after one person. Because at that point in time, y'all had been there, what, three, four days? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's it's, it's really a tough – it's a tough question. It's a tough scenario. You know, this is the it first really time is. it's happened. Yeah. Um, so, you know, going into it, yeah, I had my mindset. Other guys had different mindsets, and that's okay too. I feel mm-hmm. like, you know, depending on your personality and what you know you want, um, I think that's how you went into it. So I think some of the guys who – who went into, went into it with an open mind. Um, I think they're right to do that. You know, I mean, talk to Gabby, talk to Rachel. You're not going to know where the connection is yet. You yeah, know, until you actually girls. talk to both of them. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I mean, yeah. you're lucky to end up with either one of them. So if you go in there wanting to talk to both of them, then that's a great thing. Um, but yeah, just me personally, I just knew I had a feeling that, um, Rachel was going to be my Choose focus and, um, Gabby is a great girl. Obviously she's fantastic and she's made great connections uh, with some of the other guys. I saw that, you know, in the house, I saw some of the guys uh, really, really smitten by her and as they should be. So, um, smitten. I love that you know, one. I was taken by Rachel. Yeah. I was taken <laughs> by Rachel and, and I went for that. So how, how do you and feel, you know, walks. after watching the show back, what, 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 you know, how does Jordan feel? Yeah. You know, it was definitely tough. Um, Take, it, take it, paint a picture for us. Where were you at watching the show back? Were you with friends? Tell us that whole side. Oh, I was with some family members. Um, okay. I watched the first episode with some family, and then I watched the second episode with different family. So um, it was definitely, you know, it was hard to watch, hard to relive those feelings and those emotions. And um, it feels like a distant memory, but it's not really that that distant. And um, it was it was tough. I think, you know, I. Watching it back, I saw her trying, you know, um, to really get it, build the connection. And, and, you know, I was trying to, but um, I think, you know, watching it back, I just saw that she knew, I saw it in her face at the dinner that she knew um, what she needed to do with me. Mm-hmm. And so seeing that, it kind of gave me closure in the situation because I left and I didn't quite know why. I didn't understand. Um, but after watching it back, I think I got the closure I needed. That's good. How was uh, the support of your family? Like, how did they react to you going home? The support of my family has been great. I mean, they were so, you know, proud of me to even take this chance and go on the show. Um, so yeah, they've been great. They've supported me. They said that, um, you know, they respect how I handled the situation yeah, and how I went about it. And, uh, that's, you know, I'm, a goal of mine just to be a gentleman, you know, that's, that's, if you could, if you could try to be a gentleman, you know, then everything will work out. And, uh, I want to, you know, act with respect. And I think, I think I accomplished that. You certainly did that. You certainly, certainly did. That. did. Uh, did you watch last season when Rachel and Gabby were on The Bachelor? I did watch last season. Yes, I did. Okay, so you so you knew from like just their personality, like that was Rachel was the woman for you. Yeah, and that's why you know okay. watching their season um, with Clayton, I that's that's how I knew. You know, I knew Rachel's yeah. personality, and I felt like we would click a little better. Um, you know, oh, she's okay. very sweet, nurturing. She has that kind of vibe, you know, and um, that's kind of the way I am too. You know, I've had to take care of. You know, I enjoy taking care of my family, hanging out with family and friends. Um, so yeah, I, watching their season back, you know, I knew going into this when they were announced as Rachel and Gabby as the bachelorettes, um, I knew that I was really, really excited to meet Rachel. How do you feel about two bachelorettes? <laughs> well, it was wild in the beginning, you know, when we first found out, um, you know, you just, you don't know how it's going to go. And the first, the first thought I had was, what's it going to be like getting out of a limo? You know, are we going to walk up to two of them or is just one of them going to be there and one of them's going to be somewhere else or, you know, how's it going to go down? But um, I think with two bachelorettes, too, it made getting out of limo like way more like stressful. Like you really? I agree. You get, oh, yeah. You got out of the limo and they're both standing there and you're like, oh, my God, like there's two of them. And they're, they look first. beautiful that night, too. It, it was it, Yeah, it was wild. It was crazy. So take take us back, man. Like what? made you go on the show in the first place or when did you decide to do it? Yeah. So, you know, growing up, um, I watched a show with my mom, you know, that was something that we would do. We did. We watched your season, Brian. 
Uh, that was definitely one that stuck out with us. And, um, you know, growing up watching it, always been a fan of the show. And I always, you know, kind of thought about, you know, what if I ever got the opportunity to actually do it? And um, I found myself in a position in my life um, where I could do it. You know, I could take that chance and I could see where it would lead to. So I actually applied myself and um, was was reached out to. And it was a quick process from there, but um, I got involved and uh, I wouldn't have wanted it any, any other way. Did you apply nice. for Rachel or did you apply like prior to knowing who was going to be the bachelorette? But when you found out it was her, you were like super happy. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not always the same, obviously. I mean, you guys know that, but yeah. um, it was getting down toward the end. I think, you know, it was getting down toward the end. And so I knew kind of who it may be. And I was like, you know what? If it is, you know, I was hoping it was a certain person. So if it is, then I'm going to do it. And so I just put it in. You know, I didn't even expect to hear back, to tell you the truth. That's why I just did it. And I didn't even expect Jordan, to hear back. You, and when you I look did, like a saint, man. <laughs> no, I swear. I didn't I didn't expect it. Like, it's a, you know, it's, you no, don't expect sure. to get picked. You know, you don't expect to get that call back, you know. So I just did it thinking I was never going to hear back. And when I heard... Uh, but it was like, wow, you know, I'm definitely going to see this through and see where it goes. And then um, when I found out it was Rachel, it was even better. And was your family on board with the application the entire way? Actually, so, yeah, I didn't tell anybody I applied. Oh. And then um, you had to, when you had I to got tell some moms after back, the fact. <laughs> yeah. So then I told my mom, but then I only told my mom. That was it. She was the only person that knew. So I told my mom and she was very excited. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, because I didn't know if it was going to happen or not yet. So I told my mom I did something and, you know, I may be involved somehow. Um, didn't tell my sister, didn't tell my brother, didn't tell my dad, didn't tell my friends. Um, Damn. until <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, you know, cause I wanted it to be as special for them as it is for the rest of America. You know, I That's wanted sweet. them to experience it fully as well. Yeah. So, um, I, think we need to I didn't end up telling my mom. dad until, like she kept, Yo, that she secret, kept the secret, right? Yeah, yeah she, she kept, kept the that secret. secret. Shout out to mom. Like. She did. No, shout out to mom. Gina, shout out to mom, Gina. <laughs> shout out to Gina. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so then, you know, eventually as I got down the line, I told my dad and he was on board with it. And then I told my brother and my sister and they were ecstatic. So um, I never told my friends, though. My friends found out <laughs> when, when the everybody. cast was released. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So my friends found out when the cast was released and they went they went nuts. Obviously, I didn't know they went nuts, but they were going nuts. Amazing. That's, that's and did anybody uh, in your inner circle or I don't know if you know anybody, you know, that was on the show in the past. Did anybody give you any type of advice going in? No, I did not know anyone from the show of the past. Um, I had no advice going in. I just, your mom didn't like, give you I just took the chance. No, I mean, she, I mean, she raised me, right? That's all the advice you can give a kid, right? Raise me right and then see what happens. It's like so, you're perfect, honey. Um, <laughs> go in there and, and go Yeah, there. <laughs> just go ahead. That's go it. ahead. Um, so, yeah, no, I didn't know anybody. I went into it with an open mind, and um, it was a great experience. You know, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Talk, talk about getting, uh, you know, your mom raised you right, you know, be a great, a good child. When you first had your time with Rachel, you know, America was one of you – to to kiss right was that is that something that you do on a first date or were you like uh like was there a thought in your mind of like should i should i not at the moment's right well like, what would i do was that a thought that went through your brain honestly no it wasn't um honestly i didn't even think about it you know i wasn't going into the first night thinking you know i'm gonna kiss her you know i i wasn't thinking that i just was That's focusing on the connection i wanted to get a conversation all I, my goal was to get a conversation and just let her know that I was there, you know, mm -hmm. and get her, get to show her a little side of me. So yeah, you know, watching it back and her saying she was hoping that I kissed her. I, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't, I should have, <laughs> I guess, looking back on it. Um, but uh, well, I was just focused on building the connection and yeah, I was just focused on building connection, showing her the race car and the controls and stuff like that. And um, I think I made a good impression, not good enough for the first rows, but a good enough. Yeah, and even though you didn't kiss, right. man, I mean, yeah, like Mike said, you got the first one-on-one -on -one day. Like, how did that feel? Like, did yeah. you have any idea going in that you would 
actually be the first guy to be called? Not in my wildest dreams that I think I was going to get the first one on one. And, and it was a great honor. You know, the first one on one is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And um, when they called my name on the date card, I kind of went through shock a little bit. You saw it on TV. I was like, you know, I was like, oh, <laughs> like, I didn't think they were going to call my name. Were the um, other guys but, piercing a hole through your body? Like, Yeah, you know, like, yeah, they were. No, no, no. I think, you know, I think at that point, it's a little early, you know, like all the guys are just trying to get some time. And the first one on one is like, it's a big deal. But the guys aren't too, you know, upset with you yet. I think, I think, yeah, I think build um, connections and Chris get stronger. Me, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll get Probably, to that later. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. 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 Um, but no, it was great. I mean, to have the first one on one was special for me. And um, it was a great date to be on, too. You know, going up zero gravity was how was spectacular that spectacular experience? Seriously, it, it was wild. That. Like, OK, so I find it pretty cool now and I might be bragging a little bit, but I've gone 330 miles an hour and I've been in zero gravity. So, like, you know, that's pretty cool. Like, what's up? I've done two pretty cool things. That's an so, IG bio to me. Uh, <laughs> hey, listen. Yeah, so and I remember back. I remember back. I believe it was Nick's season. Him, yep. him, and Vanessa Grimaldi went on that same date, and she ended up throwing up on that date uh, inside the gravity oh, wow. thing. So, well, hope luckily whoa, whoa, whoa. you didn't throw. Was up. it throw up like moving around? I don't remember. I just know. I just oh. know she got sick. I remember oh, her getting God. sick. So glad I didn't have. Obviously, enjoy. that turned out because he ended up picking her at the end. But, but that must have been a crazy experience, man. At least you didn't get. You know, it seemed like you were used to it from all the the car racing and stuff. To that uh need yeah for yeah i mean speed and adrenaline yeah i don't think you ever can get used to that feeling to tell you the truth i mean maybe there was some queasiness here and there but um i was used to the g-forces you know they told us um in the, the kind of prep meeting you know you're gonna feel 1.2 g's you know stuff like that well the race car it pulls five when it takes off so it's five g's when it takes off and then wow. When I throw the parachutes, it's seven. So I know what G-Force feels like. And so when they said 1.2, I was like, okay, you know, I think I'll be able to handle that. So, um, but it was a great experience. And um, it's really like the feeling of weightlessness is honestly like, it's, it's so hard to describe it. It, it feels, I mean, the closest thing to it is like you're in a pool, obviously floating, but it's just a weightlessness to it that you can't even describe. I think I'm gonna have to do that date one day because I, I was so hating on you like in such a positive way. I was like, this date looks amazing. I want to do this so bad. But I, I, no, you were was. talking about great. the the your car. It goes five Gs off the back, right? Can you get into like your origin oh, story yeah, so, of how that even starts? How did you get into that? Yeah. Okay. So, um, drag racing's been in my family ever since I was born. Um, my grandfather kind of got involved in the sport. It's called the NHRA, uh, National Hot Rod Association. Um, he got involved. He was uh, in marketing and things like that. Um, and so my uncle took a liking to it, and he decided to start his own top fuel team. Um, it was called Bob Vandegar Racing. And um, so his rookie year was, I think, the year before that I was born. Yeah, the year before I was born. So I grew up, you know, going to the races and – not a lot of people knew what drag racing was, um, but I did. So I would go on the weekend and I'd go back to school and they'd be like, what'd you do over the weekend? And I'd be like, oh, I went to the drag race. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, <laughs> well, it's these cars. And then, you know, it's like, it's, it's so hard to explain. It's like, you just got to come with me next time. Just come with me and you'll see. So um, I eventually, you know, I tried to stay out of it growing up. My parents tried to keep me out of it. Um, they had me playing baseball. I played baseball through high school. My mom felt it was probably a little dangerous I to drive the race cars. I was ask just that. I was like, mom was so, probably totally against it. <laughs> yeah. Her so, baby in the, you in know, that, but eventually, in that thing. <laughs> yeah, eventually it got to a point where, you know, I was old enough and I was kind of looking at it and I was like, you know what? Um, you know, you only live once, right? So take the opportunities that are given to you. Take the chance. And my uncle was, you know, he, he allowed me to pursue it. And, um, it took me about two, three years to kind of get up to the professional level. Um, you start in a car that's called a super comp car. It goes about 170 miles an hour in like eight or nine seconds. Jeez. And then I made the step up to what's called a top alcohol dragster. 
Um, that goes 275 miles an hour. <laughs> That's why that naming five convention? Seconds. Right. Yeah. Why that naming convention? <laughs> Is there a reason for what do you mean? Wait, wait, for that you name? Say, so you said alcohol. Yeah, top alcohol. So it runs on alcohol. So oh, that, oh. instead of, oh, it's okay, not gas. Go. It's not your regular. So it's a top alcohol dragster. So it runs on alcohol. Okay. Uh, not the alcohol we drink. It's, <laughs> yeah, not drink. You learn something every day, Mike. You know, yeah, yeah. Man, my face right but, there, uh, I was so like, what is he talking about? Okay. <laughs> we're like, that's, no, 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 no. that's a weird name to call that. That sounds super dangerous. Yeah, like, no. Going this fast and drinking? Okay. <laughs> Yo, so Yeah, wait. so hey, that. No, no, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Finish it. Finish wait, it. wait, finish it. Yeah, well, I got it. Okay, so top alcohol dragster. Okay. That goes 275 miles an hour. In about 5.2 seconds. So crazy. Um, and then you make the step up. That took me about a year. You make the step up to the professional level. Uh, and it, what's called a top fuel dragster. And the top fuel dragster is the quickest accelerating car on the planet. Um, it goes zero to 330 miles an hour in about 3.7 seconds. Jesus. So to put that in perspective, you know, um, your average car goes zero to 60 in like five or six seconds. I go zero to a hundred miles an hour in 0.8 seconds. What? So it's, what? it's, it's the quick acceleration. That's the thing. And then, you know, the speed part of it is at the end of the track, which is cool. So uh, that's why it pulls five G's that when you take off, it pulls five G's because it's zero to a hundred in 0.8 seconds. I, I have, I have, I have questions. <laughs> so okay, do ask, them, ask the questions. So, ask the questions. So like, was this, you got in the car first time, you felt the the need for speed, you loved it, or were you freaked the freak out? <laughs> I wanted to say the effort. I have never said this. I have never said this before. I was terrified. You know, when I first got in it. <laughs> I'm not gonna kid you. I'm not gonna kid you. You you know, you think that you just get in these things and you're like, you know, you're gonna be all macho and it's gonna be great, you know. Uh, but no, you're absolutely terrified, especially when I strapped into the top fuel car for the first time. Yeah. Um, it was an organized shutoff, you know, you go about 300 feet and you, and you get off the gas. So, you know, my first run, it was in Vegas and we hit it. I went to 300 feet, let off and I got out of the car and I'm thinking to myself, am I absolutely insane <laughs> for wanting to do this, Yeah, for wanting to do this and keep doing it? And I had to question myself, but eventually, you know, you get used to it with all the runs you have and, um, and then it turns into fun. Then once you get used to it, it's real fun. Is, okay, is there, so that was my follow up question. Like, what's your end game? What's your why with this sport? Like, do you want to be the greatest drag racer to ever live? Like, what's your, yeah, what's your end yeah, game absolutely. Ab- actually, yeah, you know, um, that's the kind of person I am. You know, anything I get involved in, I want to be the that. best at. Um, <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, you know, I want to be the best drag racer to ever live. There's a couple guys that, uh, there's actually a lot of famous, famous drag racers, and, um, hopefully one day that my name will be mentioned with some of their their names i'm, I'm sure that's crazy we, do you guys like have we may, like, be ta- we may be talking to the future all-time best that's crazy brian we're Let's not maybe so. we are we 100 percent are talking to the future all-time. that's right, there you go. That's put, right. It, put it out right. there mike put it out put, into I, the universe i got you put Jordan. it on the world put it on the world maybe it'll come true <laughs> I, I have so many questions myself what one is there a, a season for drag racing because i mean yes. you had to take time away from the show so are you in off season technically right now no, technically, or actually, they're now, racing right now. Okay. And are you back racing? Or are you, they're racing no. right now. So um, last weekend, they raced in Denver, Colorado. Okay. Um, this weekend, they'll be in Sonoma, California. Um, so, yeah, they're racing right now. Um, I'm working on a few things, obviously, the show. And it was a great opportunity for me. So, um, And I wanted to meet Rachel. So, hey, um, I don't blame you. That was, that was really the kicker. That was really the, that was really the kicker, So. Uh, um, <laughs> But yeah, I'm focused on next year, next year, or maybe maybe a few races this year. But we'll see. So let's, um, I'm sorry, Brian. I, gotta, I, I, so, I have so many questions in regards to this. It's so cool to me. Yeah. So when it, in like I love boxing, right? And they say there, or in just sure. fighting in general, when you're out of a ring, there's like dust that you have. Like they say, you know, ring dust or whatever the case may be. Is it the same yeah. for drag racing? Would you say? Yeah, you know, it's it's a brush of adrenaline, you know. Typically, on average, you'll do two runs a day. Okay. So those two runs take a lot cost? of adrenaline out of you. How much it cost? Yeah, because I mean, I know gas got to be um, crazy, right? Well, <laughs> so I, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but why not? Who cares? Um, one run, just one run, 
probably cost like seven to ten thousand dollars. Dude, wait, seven to ten grand for how many seconds? Like for a second, a little under four, a little under four. Okay, so and that's because and that's but that's because so let so let me explain. The parts are really, you know, the parts are expensive. Of course. So yeah. because we make so much horsepower and because the cars are so violent, like it's 11,000 horsepower. So, you know, it's it's an unheard of amount of horsepower. So I know I said that on the show and they got me saying that, but it's kind of a cool stat. Um, it is. But yes, yeah, so the parts get basically wrecked every run. Um, wow. So that's where, that's why it costs so much because you kind of have to replace things um, after each run. So. Um, so it's yeah, really it's, a big it's, thing it's for you to be a professional because I mean they're the sponsor the people that are that you're a part of are putting a lot of money into you. I was gonna ask that. Mm-hmm. Is it sponsorships? Is that some of your own money? Yeah. All your own money? It's no, it's sponsorships. Okay, it's sponsorships. I, say, I mean, yep, yep, I'm like, yep, Jordan, yep. I don't know your pockets, costly. but bro, can you afford fifteen thousand dollars a day? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's sponsorships. It's sponsorships. So do you guys have to be in shape for this? Um, you know, I like to, st- I mean, I like to stay in shape just cause you know, that's who I am. Yeah. Um, but like to be a great yeah, racer I think, for the I, I think staying, like, are I mean, you I think sore staying in shape can, o- after? yeah. So it can only, you know, staying in shape can only help you. I feel like, you know, like uh, yeah, there's I mean, no downside yeah, to yeah, being in shape, like that, yeah. you know? True. So Very true. yeah, you do get sore. So when you get seat belted in the car, there's two big straps that come, you know, over your shoulders. And you get wenched down like hard because if something happens, you know, um, you want to be strapped in tight yeah. and to the, to the cockpit. So, um, yeah. So sometimes, you know, you get out of the car, you, you break open the belts and throw them off. And yeah, when I get home at night at the hotel, your collarbones will be a little, be a little sore. Cause especially when you throw the parachutes too, it throws you forward like really hard. So, um, you, you might get some bruising around this area, but so, for example, like obviously IndyCar, they have the Indy 500. Then there's the Daytona yep. 500. Like, what's the Super Bowl of drag racing? Good question. The Super Bowl of drag racing is called the U.S. Nationals, okay. and it's in Indianapolis, Indiana. Nice. Um, and it is the holy grail of drag races. Yeah, if you win Indy, then you've made it. Your name's cemented. It's it always goes Indy Real winner. Legend. Your name. Yeah. Nice. When when, so when, when is that? Is it? Yeah, when is it every year? Uh, that's actually Labor Day. Okay, I'm so have something to do. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's there's 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 a there's a possibility I could be, I could be driving. I could. How be do you, how do you know? Like, do you have to qualify, like with other races. Uh, yeah. Or? So so a race structure. Well, a race structure. I mean, I'm trying to find you know, uh, basically fi- try to find a seat with the team. Um, but yeah, so the race structure is you do qualifying Friday and Saturday. And then the race is on Sunday. So qualifying Friday and Saturday, typically one to two qualifying runs, you get seated based off your quick times. So, you know, the quicker you are, you're number one. The slower you are, you're number 16. It goes to 16. Um, And then Sunday on race day, it's one versus 16, two versus 15, and it's ladder style. And then you just go down the ladder. So the winners move on to the second round. Second round winners move on to the semifinals. And the semifinal winners move on to the final. And then whoever wins the final wins the race. So you have to win four times in a row to win the race. Oh, so wow. it's like NBA finals. You got to win. And that's four. just to get into the, to Indy? To the, yeah. Wow. No, so that's, so qualifying to get into Indy is just Friday and Saturday to okay, seed gotcha. you, depending Man. on how many cars are. If 22 cars show up, then, you know, at 16 spots, then six cars don't make it. So you have to make it to Sunday. Jordan, so is this Sunday, an expensive sport happens. to get into? Like before um, you get, it's obviously expensive. Are. But before you get yeah. sponsored, like how can you, can somebody from like a lawyer economic upbringing go into this sport easily? Yeah, you know what? So that's that's the great thing about drag racing. Um, we have so many categories. I mean, there's a few at the top. There's about four or five professional categories. Oh, um, wow. But other than that, it's called the Sportsman Series, and drag racing goes all the way down the ladder it's really grassroots drag racing is really where you know it it really matters you know there's plenty of people that that bring their 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 old school cars out to the drag strip on the weekend and have a lot of fun so um 
anybody can do it and i really recommend it it's really fun you know just stay off the streets if you want to go fast come to the track we've got yeah. the track there for you don't, don't drive, drive fast on the streets that's what the, the one big thing a lot of people ask me it's like oh you know do you drive fast and i'm like no like no. i just stay safe on the streets <laughs> no I and i go fast limit. on the track <laughs> i was gonna ask have you ever like suffered any injuries doing this and also sometimes you see these like nascar drivers like they get heated with each other. I mean, obviously, they're like racing and weaving in and out of traffic yeah. and bumping yeah. into each other. Like, have you ever had any beef with any of the drivers at all? On no, the circuit? no, I haven't had. No, first, I haven't had any injuries. Um, OK, good. Crashing no, and drag with, racing. The, knock on wood for you. Man. Yeah, the technology. Yeah, the technology has really advanced um, and the cars are really safe. They're the safest they've ever been. Nice. So I feel safe in it. Um, you know, things can happen, but that's kind of. It's kind of what you accept when you get in the car. You know, you kind of have to face that reality. And I have. Sure. Um, but, yeah, no, there's no injuries. And then um, I think, what was the second question you asked me, Brian? It as was far about, as, like, the competitive nature within the, oh, the racing nature. circuit. Like, has there ever been any problems with any other drivers at all? No, I mean, I think when you're in, when you're in competition, you know, tempers are going to flare. And in drag racing, tempers definitely do flare. Me, my personality... A little laid back, a little easy going, and uh, you said it's like so smooth. Fun, I'm but, a little uh, laid back. <laughs> yeah, because you know how there's like a but, code uh, of conduct, like in other sports, like yeah. oh, do you, you're drawing, you know, you're crossing the line when you do this. Like I was wondering if there's anything. No, like there that is. In, yeah. Okay. What would, some, like, yeah, no, what would def- something be like that? Okay, so here, let me see. Let me see if I could try to explain this. Um, the big thing would be with the staging procedures. Okay. So how I'm going to explain this is, so two cars are racing each other, right? Mm -hmm. And they come up to the starting line, all right? So to get them exactly even at the starting line, we go through a two-step process of staging, okay? So how it tells us is there's two, there's kind of like a half circle bulb. So when you go into the pre-stage, that means you're about six inches away from being staged and ready. So that top half of the bulb will come on. So that lets the other driver know that, you know, you're in the pre-stage position. So you wait for the other driver to get in pre-stage. So then it's two half circles on top. So then both drivers know that they're in pre-stage. Okay. So then there's a procedure in pre-stage. It's driver stuff. I I won't go through that. But, um, and then that's when you have a person goes in, the whole bulb will light up. That means they're staged and ready to go. So then the other person has to get in. The whole bulb will light up, stage ready to go. And then at, at any moment, the lights will flash, and that's when you go. So how you can have some beef in drag racing is if you both light the pre-stage bulb and one guy goes in, or girl, we have champions that are women in our sport, which I'm very Love proud of. That. Um, and... If they so if one person goes in and lights the whole bulb and the other person on the other lane doesn't and waits, they have seven seconds. But if they wait that whole seven seconds, that's kind of like a no go. Like that's kind of disrespectful in a way. So that's one way you can have beef on the drag strip. That's crazy, man. So going going back to uh to the show aspect, but then still you being a driver, yep. you had mentioned a Rachel, like it's hard you you and Rachel connected with, it's hard for some people to understand y'all's career and things of that nature. Have yeah. you had women that you've dated in the past that were on edge about you being a driver? And if so, what happened in those situations? Obviously, y'all aren't together, but. Um, yeah, yes and no. I think um, they understood it was my passion and it was something, mm-hmm. you know, I strive to be great at. And while it was dangerous, um, I think, you know, they had trust in me. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's tough for somebody watching. I mean, especially, you know, my mom and my dad and my family, even, you know, it's tough for anybody to watch me get in one and go down the track. So, um, but yeah, with Rachel, you know, flying is, you know, flying is the real deal, you know, especially what she does, you know, being a flight instructor and, you know, she's been up by herself. Um, it's kind of the same scenario, you know, you, you, you're in control of your own destiny, right? Um, so that's where, you know, we understood each other and I knew that I could see in her when I explained things to her about my career that 
She knew. She knew that feeling. Like there's just a certain feeling when you're up there alone, when you're in the car alone, when you're in a plane alone. There's a feeling that only you know. And I knew she felt that. So um, it was kind of cool to talk to her. And, and I really enjoyed kind of picking her brain about flying and stuff like that. She showed me when the plane was taking off um, in zero gravity. She was showing me with her feet what she would be doing if she was flying the plane with her That's controls. So, cool. so I thought that was really cool. Uh, definitely so. so. I mean, what are some of the things you had mentioned? You're working on some things right now. What are some of those things that you, if you feel like disclosing that you're also working on? Yeah, it's just getting back in the race car. You know, okay. um, I had my, my rookie year was in 2019. Okay. Um, since 2019, a lot has happened in this world. Do you, um, did, did COVID affect with, your world at all? Yeah, it, sh it shut down the racing for a little while. Okay. Um, and it kind of, you know, yeah, it, it definitely did affect it and it affected my schedule as well. Um, but now, you know, things are, are on the up, on the upswing and, um, I'm just looking to get back into a race car as soon as possible and go back racing again. So, you know, after the show, like, so I want to ask you this question, but I was told that you may or may not be dating someone. I'm lying. No one told me that. No one told me that at all. No. No. <laughs> I was trying no. to get something out of no, you. No, I'm are single. You dating? Nope. No, so, I'm not. Not at the moment. So speaking of that, what Brian and I knows what I'm about to ask, will you and other boys be on Bachelor in Paradise sometime in the future? Um, yeah, you know, in the future, I'm definitely never going to rule that out. Um, I think right now it, it definitely be a thought, you know, I'd have to think about it a little bit more, but I wouldn't rule it out. Um, and maybe possibly in the future, I could see myself doing it. He's got some drag racing trophies to win, Mike. There he does. I don't even know, Brian, I don't even know if he'll make it to Bachelor of Paradise. I have a strong hunch that Jordan's DMs are popping. <laughs> Very strong hunch about that. So. Yeah. It's like, Rachel don't want you. We do. <laughs> <laughs> All Every single last adrenaline junkie is going to be hitting you up. Say, I have that feeling, too. <laughs> yes. yes. I love it. But, Jordan, seriously, you are a phenomenal sport. I can tell you have a good heart. Uh, shout out to Miss Gina. Shout out to your to your father, your brother, your sister as well, and everybody, man. You're a great guy. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I Absolutely. appreciate it a lot. Yeah. And before you go, man, we would love to get uh I don't know if you know how we do it on this show, but we always drop a gem at the end of the show. We love our guests to do that. So what's your gem for everybody out there? All right, my gem is live life with no regrets, man. Take chances. That's the way I live my life. Um, you know, I kind of had this thought when I was younger, you know, if I was 60, 70, 80 years old, um, if I would regret it, if I would regret not doing it, then I'm going to do it. So um, with my racing career and things like that, I would, I knew I was going to regret it if I didn't do it. I took the chance and went for it. And, you know, this, this opportunity uh, for the bachelorettes was kind of the same, you know, it was, would I regret not doing it? And the answer was yes, absolutely. I'd regret it. So I went for it and I took the chance and and now we're here. You know, yeah. Brian, when you meet people that are really successful in athletes, but sometimes like CEOs, people like see people that are really successful, they have a very calming spirit because they're always under pressure. And I feel that with you, Jordan. Like you're just really even kill. It's a good thing. I love that about you. But yeah, yeah. Can't wait to see you in the future. Can't wait to see you at the US Nationals, man. <laughs> hey, well, let's Absolutely. hope so. Let's hope so. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for coming on, man. You were uh, you were great. Wish Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. it. Great Have to meet you home. both. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mike. I had a great time. I find Jordan to be, a, from our interview with him, a really good catch for somebody. That's what that's what, that's the way yeah. I'll say that. I find I, him to be a good I'm catch for somebody. I'm telling you, man. I was I was shocked. I thought I think he's a good looking guy. He's got like a cool job, <laughs> like. I don't know. I thought they were getting along, so I'm sad to see him go. But like you said, man, I don't think he's going to have any problems finding <laughs> a nice young lady. <laughs> he won't have no yeah, problems whatsoever, all, but, but uh, wish him nothing but the best. Absolutely. And we hope you guys love this episode. We appreciate you for tuning in each and every week and uh, just continue to do it. We're going to try to bring you the best content possible. We love y'all.
No, we definitely do. And again, thank you guys so much for stopping us on the street and saying you love our pod, you hate our pod, just all the things and all the thoughts that you feel about it, your opinions, your comments, your stories. We read them, we listen to them, your insight. So please, when you see us in the street, say what's up. And when you see us on social, don't forget to like, comment, follow. Message us on social at Talking About B as in Bachelor in the Nation on IG. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and listen to us on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. And baby, don't DM me no more until you hit that subscribe. We love y'all.